It is chilly outside right now, I believe. It's negative 10 degrees. I don't want to get that wrong. I know the low today is about negative 12. It is negative 10 right now per my phone. Negative 10 degrees. We are here. It snowed last night. We will keep you company. And again, you can help me out today. 402-464-5685. Call or text all show long. As you can tell yesterday, Sip was under the weather. Uh, and he is out today, hopefully back at some point tomorrow. But Mike Schaefer will be here at some point again today, either in the 7 o'clock hour either or before that on the stream yard in studio. It's all kind of a wait and see approach regarding Mike Schaefer. But appreciate you guys tuning in, and we uh, hope you tune in and give your thoughts throughout the show. Regarding yesterday, so we are finally we are past the initial day of early National Signing Day. And I tell you what. We are, we are trying on this show to not drink Kool-Aid, to not consume Kool-Aid at unhealthy levels. But yesterday was a very good day for Nebraska football. Now you, now, you did not get Barry Jackson, who does go to Cincinnati later in the day. But before that, you got a lot of guys to flip to Nebraska that were kind of on the fence, including, of course, at 1045, Malachi Coleman, who we knew had talked to Colorado, uh, commits to Nebraska, says he's a 1,000% into Nebraska. So that was Big news, getting the four-star out of Lincoln East to commit to the Huskers. And then later on in the day, you get Elijah Judy, the defensive tackle from Texas A&M to, tra- to a commit to Nebraska uh, via the transfer portal. And then Vincent Carroll Jackson, another defensive lineman that was looking at Syracuse, flips because of Tony White and the, the new D.C. here at Nebraska and his connection with him. And then Eric Fields, who, who Matt Rule mentioned at uh, the podium, Yesterday, he said he's kind of maybe the, a guy that's overlooked in this class, but he's going to be someone that everybody knows because he is a playmaker. He's fast. He hits hard. So Eric Fields is another guy that that Matt Rule was very high on. But I, I'm curious right now with you guys, because, uh, it, again, it, it's really hard to assess a class before you see them play. So that's the danger of recruiting in terms of getting excited. And as you see at A&M and places like that, regarding hey you know are these classes any good or not um uh, you know we don't know until these guys play games we have we have no idea until anybody plays a game if they're any good but yesterday i think we can all agree was a good day for nebraska football and then you have last night at 8 p.m matt rule keeps referring to this throughout the hours of the day yesterday at eight o'clock uh it posts something about 24 hours from now there'll be some big news so i guess tonight At 8 p.m. Central Time, prepare yourselves for some sort of big news regarding Nebraska football via Matt Rule and his Twitter timeline, which is taking off like crazy. I have no idea what to expect if that's about a 2024 recruit in Dylan Raiola, if it's something else. I don't know where to go with that. I don't have any intel in terms of what to expect with that news. But but at at 8 p.m. tonight, you'll hear something via Matt Rule or the Husker football account regarding something for 2024. But again, 464-5685, call or text your thoughts on yesterday's haul for Nebraska football. Uh, you know, they end of the day, that uh, Nebraska was, I believe, fourth in the Big Ten Conference behind Michigan, Michigan, uh, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State in, uh, in, in rankings, which is pretty impressive for a, a staff that just got here literally at the, at the first of this month. And for a staff that people were concerned saying, hey, they didn't recruit that well when they were at Baylor and at Temple. You know, Matt Rule never had a, a really highly ranked class. Well, I think you're seeing that that maybe right now that's that's not a, a valid concern going forward. And, and he keeps hyping up in these in his press conference and even on Twitter, 2024 as, as far as being a big recruiting class. So, I mean, I, here I am. I'm 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 trying to sit back. I'm trying to not guzzle the Kool-Aid at an unhealthy level because uh, you know we've been, we've all been guilty of that before in our time at Nebraska, whether it's this era or the Pelini era or Callahan or Riley or Frost. You know, Kool-Aid consumption has, has poisoned a lot of us and our belief in where this is going as a fan base. But I, I think it's fair to say that yesterday was a good day. From the text line, 4645685, Matt G says, do we not need offensive linemen? No, Nebraska, Nebraska needs offensive linemen. They do. And they, you got Jason Machichek from Pierce, South Dakota. And then you load up on some defensive players, as I mentioned, Elijah Judy from AM, a transfer there, as well as 
Vincent Carroll Jackson, the Syracuse commit, transfers, you know, chooses Nebraska over Syracuse. But those, as you say, Matt G, are defensive linemen. You are correct. And but I Matt Rule at the podium we talked about the trenches. He said, no, we, you know, we need to fortify the trenches. He, he said, it's important to build from the inside out. And I, it's, I, I think I love a coach that says that that's out there commenting on the importance of building from the inside out. And yeah, maybe you haven't seen it yet with what you want for the offensive lineman, but um, I, I'm not going to panic there yet. I'm not going to say that, Hey, this class is bad because you didn't get enough offensive linemen. I would say, look at the, you know, I know right now in a, in a place that's lost, it's, it's missed six straight bowl games. It's easy to look at the negatives above the positives. I get that. And you know, I, I do that all the time. I do it all the time, but in this case, Hey, this guy's brand new. He only had a half a month to, to get a class together. And I think he did a pretty damn good job keeping guys on the previous, the previous uh, guys, you know, previous coaches commit list and adding some other great players, other solid players from both the area and outside the area. And I want to know from you guys at four, six, four, five, six, eight, five of the guys I mentioned that were not necessarily in the commit list before yesterday and ended up being commits two part question. Which one are you most surprised about? And which one are you most excited about? Do you, do you sit here this morning and, and have excitement for Malachi Coleman? There's, there's, been, a lot of, there's been a lot of conversation in the state over the, this, this football season, this high school football season, that Malachi Coleman was overrated. And I don't, you know, I'm not going to do that to the kid to say that he's, not, you know, he's overrated and he won't play here. It's, it's not fair to say that to him as someone that is, you know, did a great job at Lincoln East, is is uh, highly regarded across the country. As we all know, Oklahoma was curious of him. Colorado, other schools came talking to Malachi. Uh, maybe it's a surprise he's staying home in Lincoln, but are you excited about that one, or, or do you have doubts about Malachi? I, again, I'm not going to sit here and speak poorly of any kid that just committed to Nebraska, transfer or high school kid or not, because we haven't seen him besides high school. We have no idea how these kids will adapt in college. So to speak ill of someone or speak down of them because of what you think they might be is just frankly unfair. It's frankly unfair. And, and I'm not going to sit here and, and say that about anybody, um, even though there's a lot of people in this state that, that aren't really high on Malachi Coleman and believe he's overrated and, and isn't good. I, I, I refuse to say that until we see how he responds to coaching in college and how he plays in the field at Nebraska from the text line four six four five six eight five John says Jake just sip the Kool-Aid that's 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 responsible that's responsible this place likes to guzzle Kool-Aid though we all know no you either don't drink it or you guzzle it there's no really sipping involved of the Kool-Aid level but as Matt G says earlier, if you, if you want to properly sip the Kool-Aid, not chug it regarding this specific, this specific class, the offensive line would be a reason to not chug it completely. They got some impressive parts at other positions. You know, they, they did not, they obviously did, did not smi- uh, switch Benny Nagoya from Iowa State to Nebraska. That was disappointing in the morning, but also not completely surprising that he stuck with Matt Campbell and uh, in Iowa State. But other than that, I mean, you got eight players from the state in this class to go to Nebraska. How many times have we harped in this show? I mean, at least me. I know Sip kind of isn't always on this, but I, how many times have I harped? You got to get players from your state that want to play here and that can. A lot of guys end up going to North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Iowa, you know, Kansas State, places nearby and end up having success there. And it doesn't make sense how you just let those guys go from your border. Is everyone in the state Nebraska worthy? No, they're not. But if there's someone that is talented that other Division One schools are after, I want to also be after that kid. And I don't think that's ridiculous to say that. So I commend Matt Rule and, and staff for making it important. And Ed Foley, the special teams coach, said, you know, you're not going to see guys leave the state very often anymore. If we want them in the state, 
we're getting them. And that, my friends, is the mentality you want to have from a coaching staff. It, it, it's sickening to see players ever leave the state and go elsewhere. Do I understand them leaving? Sure. They all have dream schools. They all have places that want them more than the school in the state that they that they uh, live in. And, and by the way, Nebraska has been very good for a while, so I, I don't blame them. But I do like it how this staff is saying it's a priority to get the players here to stay here. And that is exactly what I want. 464-5685. Again, call or text as always. We've got a phone call. If you can hear me, you're on early break. Could we have you? Go, go ahead. Hey, it's uh, Denny. How are you? Denny. Good, man. Thanks for calling in. Hey, I, I want to give actually kudos to the whole staff here, Matt Rule and them. They not only had a plan coming in and they executed it and they, they said the right things. And I, I know that as Husker fans, we want to drink Kool-Aid, right? Right. And yes. as you said, but I think what we're at right now is we're making Kool-Aid. All right. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out if this thing's sweet or not. So <laughs> that only comes in time. Sure. You know, sure. And I think it was very good what they did as a whole by targeting kids that were right. It, it appears on the surface, at least, that they have the right character. And, you know, you brought up the Malachi Coleman and the yeah. switches and stuff and to comment on that. Malachi Coleman, his life indicates struggle and stick to itiveness in his whole story. I don't know why we wouldn't expect that to be the same thing when he gets into the program. You know, sure. I, he's I, the, the kid was homeless with his sister, right? Yep. And right. you talk about a fighter. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why we wouldn't expect that to be a change because somebody who's always had to fight and earn their way for everything doesn't change that. They don't they don't ever feel like they've arrived because there is no safety net, right? He sure. has no safety net as a, as a human being uh, to go, well, hey, you know what? I've got NIL money. No, because he knows that has an expiration date. He isn't somebody who looks at life and says, I've arrived. I have no indicator that that is the case with him and in, in, in what he does. Um, what's your thoughts on, on that kind of mentality that you've picked up on from him? Yeah, thanks for the call, Denny. Uh, I think that yeah, you're right. I mean, for anybody that likes to dog on Malachi, don't don't forget where he came from. And uh, people say, well, yeah, we know where he came from. And he played hard early on, but he he, he kind of looked like he arrived this year was kind of was kind of lazy. I mean, again, I'm not going to speak for the kid and speak down on him and say that you know that that's the case going forward. That he that his senior year that was disappointing for him is who he's going to be. Keep in mind, he lost a great quarterback. I mean, his quarterback, his junior year, went Noah Walters, goes to North Alabama, and ends up playing as a true freshman down there at a Lincoln East. I mean, they, they he had a great quarterback that helped him out big time. And if you have a great quarterback, guess what? Things can you, – you can get better immediately. Now, is he going to play offense or defense? We don't know for sure exactly what the plan is for Malachi Coleman in college yet. We'll, we'll see that throughout you know, the, ne- the next months ahead year ahead as we see where he fits in with this program. But you're right, Denny. I mean, this this is a guy that has had a lot of adverse, adversity through his life. Now he's getting people criticizing him again. Maybe this takes it back to where he was before last season, his junior year, where he proves himself and becomes big time. So I, I'm, I'm going to give Malachi every chance he can uh, to prove himself that he is worthy of his high rating, his high rankings, and that he could potentially be someone – that's successful here. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and dog on the kid. I, I want him to be successful. So you should want all these kids to be successful. They're part of the class. And by the way, I misspoke a little bit ago. We'll get to one more call here in a second. Uh, Nebraska is is fifth in the Big Ten in the class per 24-7 sports. Here's where the other schools line up. Ohio State tops in the Big Ten in 2023, recruiting their fifth overall in the country, followed by Penn State, who was 13th overall is second in the Big Ten in the 2023 class. Uh, They had 23 commits. Michigan comes in at 17th, so third overall in the Big Ten. And Michigan State, just ahead of Nebraska at 25th, they had 15 commits, but uh, they had nine four-stars. Nine four-stars and six three-stars, so a good haul despite not that many kids for Michigan State. And then Nebraska, again, out of nowhere, 
a, a great, great finish to the class for Matt Rule. They finish right now, at, as, as of this point, they are fifth in the Big Ten, 28th in the country, 21 commits, uh, four three-stars, 18 three-stars. Oh, sorry, four, three four-stars, 18 three-star players, and then you have the transfers in there as well. So uh, impressive first haul for Matt Rule, all things considered, with a lack of time to, to get things going. And he seems very, very, very excited about 2024, which would help you make you indicate, is it Dylan Raiola? Is it others beyond that? We don't know. But like I said earlier, Matt Rule keeps talking about 8 p.m. tonight on Twitter, something happening. So stay tuned to Matt Rule's Twitter or Twitter in general at 8 p.m. Central Time tonight.